I'll go first. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Singapore's founding father, Lee Kuan Yew, said this. We are one interacting, interdependent world. The problems besetting the world are transnational and the solutions must be transnational. Today we open a new chapter in the comprehensive strategic partnership between Australia and Singapore. The Green Economy Agreement signals collective resolve to confront challenges as we transition our economies to net zero. It will support clean energy innovation, unlock business opportunities and create jobs, and help deliver our emissions targets while positioning Australia as a renewable energy superpower. Our commitment to work towards a food pact will shore up reliable and secure supply chains and provide certainty for Australian exporters. We also discuss the strategic outlook and our commitment to a free, open and resilient region. I do want to thank Prime Minister Lee and thank him not just for the formal interaction that we've had here today, uh, but also for the dinner uh, where Jody and myself hosted uh, the Prime Minister and Mrs Lee last night at the Lodge in what was a very enjoyable occasion indeed. I have had the great privilege and honour of being a guest in Singapore on many occasions over a number of decades now. And it's wonderful to, rec to welcome a great friend of Australia, uh, Prime Minister, here today. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'd like to thank the Prime Minister for his warm hospitality and to express how happy I am to be back in Canberra again in person meeting Australian le leaders and particular, particularly Prime Minister Albanese. Uh, we talked about many things, but we in particular affirmed our strategic, comprehensive strategic partnership, which has made significant progress since it was set up in 2015. And our bilateral cooperation has proceeded apace even during COVID-19. Uh, in fact, Singapore was the second country that Australia opened its doors to for quarantine-free travel. And we formed the fourth largest group of short-term visitors to Australia in the first half of this year, which considering there are only five and a half million odd people in Singapore is not bad. Uh, we greatly appreciate Australia's generous and consistent support for our military training. It has fully resumed. And we are very happy that our uh, units are present here and able to be of assistance to the Australian government in times of need, for example, during national, natural disasters and floods. I mentioned to the Prime Minister just now that Singapore is ready to provide assistance to support the Australian Defence Forces flood relief efforts for the floods in New South Wales and Victoria and whatever else may develop in the season and our officials will be in touch uh, to work out how we can be most helpful. Uh, we've also worked on other areas to take our bilateral cooperation further, for example in the Singapore-Australia Green Economy Agreement, which will support the transitions of our countries to net zero emissions and at the same time boost growth and job create jobs in the green sectors. It's the first such agreement of its kind between countries and we hope that it will be a pathfinder for other countries similarly to cooperate with one another to deal with what is a global problem. Uh, we are also deepening our cooperation in science and innovation. Our agencies, ASTAR on Singapore side and the CSIRO on the Australian side, have signed a master research collaboration agreement to collaborate in areas like low emission technologies, alternative proteins and advanced manufacturing as well as an agreement which will allow Singapore researchers to use Australia's synchrotron facilities, which will, all of which will further deepen linkages between scientists on both sides. Uh, we are also exploring new areas of cooperation because we are natural partners which have similar views on many issues and trusted and reliable partners of each other, which has which we have demonstrated during the pandemic. 
So we're looking at new strategic areas of cooperation, such as strengthening the security and resilience of our supply chains, including on food and energy, and our connectivity to the rest of the world. And we will also look into facilitating the flow of critical goods between us in times of crisis. And we formed up a working group to look into this matter. Uh, we also exchange views on regional and global devel developments. Australia is a key partner for our region. Singapore has long strongly supported Australia, strengthening links with Southeast Asia. And we very much welcome Prime Minister Albanese's efforts to deepen this engagement and look forward to him participating in the ASEAN, the APEC and the G20 meetings uh, which are taking place in Southeast Asia in a few weeks' time. Therefore, I'm very happy that the relations between our two countries have remained strong. Uh, it's a troubled world, and given the tensions in the world, it's important that like-minded countries work together for our mutual benefit, and I look forward to working with Prime Minister Albanese and his government to take our bilateral relations to even greater heights. Thank you. Thanks very much, Prime Minister. Stephen. Uh, Prime Minister, thank you. Uh, on the Optus hack, uh, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, can I ask you, uh, what technical assistance, if any, has the Singaporean government uh, offered to both Singtel and potentially to Optus to help deal with the security breach uh, here in Australia? And Prime Minister Lee, uh, if I could ask you, you've been an advocate for China being allowed to join the CPTPP, whereas Australia of course, has been much more sceptical on that point. Was this discussed uh, between the two of you today? And have you urged Prime Minister Anthony Albanese uh, on this point at all? Uh, thanks very much. Uh, on the Optus issue, uh, we did have a discussion about that, and the Prime Minister uh, indicated, of course, that Singtel, which is a, a Singapore-based uh, company, uh, which uh, is uh, the uh, owner of, of Optus uh, will have full cooperation uh, with the government in dealing with the issue. Uh, there are two issues here. Uh, one is a cyber security issue, the other is a privacy issue. Of course, some of the issues uh, exposed by the Optus breach are covered uh, with the Privacy Act already. And it is a wake up call. Uh, to all companies about data retention and about the need to be vigilant in making sure that the provisions of the Privacy Act are complied with, uh, that there is no need uh, to and indeed a requirement under the Privacy Act uh, to ensure uh, that data isn't kept uh, for uh, no purpose going forward. And that is one of the things that's been exposed here uh, by the incident. Uh, but I appreciate uh, the Prime Minister, of course, uh, being cooperative uh, on, on this issue, as, as I would completely expect. On Optus, I told the Prime Minister that Singapore takes the data breach very seriously. We expect all Singapore companies to comply fully with domestic laws wherever they operate and to cooperate with the domestic regulators to protect consumers' interests, just as we would expect all companies to do in Singapore. In the case of Optus, this is an Australian company. It's incorporated and headquartered in Australia. Its operations are run out of Australia and not from Singapore. And therefore, Australia's rules and regulations apply in addressing this incident. Uh, I told the Prime Minister, the Singtel Group, which owns Optus, is taking the incident seriously and, as owner, will fully support Optus in meeting Australia's rules and requirements in handling the incident. Uh, our cybersecurity and infocom agencies have also reached out to their Australian counterparts. We stand ready to provide support to the Australian government should our assistance be needed. Thank you. On um, the CPTPP, we've stated our position. I have that I think it's good if China is able to join the CPTPP. They will, of course, have to meet the requirements fully, uh, the conditions and the obligations. But I think that's something which is possible and can be negotiated. But of course, for China to join the CPTPP, there has to be a consensus amongst all the existing members. 
And it so happens that this year Singapore is chairing the CPTPP um, uh, committee. And as chair, we will uh, do our duty and canvass views amongst the, have been canvassing views amongst the participants uh, on uh, applicants um, who have want, who want to join, whether they sh the process should begin. China has applied, so have some other applicants. And uh, I don't think there's a consensus yet, but we'll continue the process. And as for Australia's position, I, I, mean, we, I think Australia knows what it is doing and uh, we understand each other's point of view. Straight to terms. My question is for Prime Minister Lee. Um, on the GAA, is Singapore eyeing similar agreements, GAAs, with other countries in the region and what are the benefits for Singapore businesses and consumers? Well, the first GAA we are signing is with Australia. We are very happy at this. It's the world's first such agreement and it will support the transition of our countries to net zero emissions as well as create jobs and growth opportunities in green sectors and promote the development and commercialization of green technologies. Uh, the scope for collaboration will include trade and investment, green and transition finance, carbon markets, clean energy, decarbonization and technology, business engagements and partnerships. And it will include seven joint initiatives to start off with. For example, establishing an MOU to facilitate business partnerships in priority green sectors, developing a list of environmental goods and services, which means then they can be given preferential trade treatment, and forming working groups to further cooperation in cross-border electricity trade and sustainable aviation. These are all areas which are of interest to Singapore and to Singapore businesses, and we hope with a Singapore-Australia GEA, uh, they'll be able to move forward. Uh, we also hope that with a GE, this GEA, uh, it will encourage other countries to look at what we have been able to do and to ask whether some of this may not make sense for them to do with Singapore or to do with each other. And that way, enhance cooperation on green issues, which I think is important if mankind is going to have any hope of making progress on climate change, which is an urgent and pressing problem. Can, can I just uh, follow up uh, the Prime Minister by saying, from Australia's perspective, this is very exciting. My government have continually emphasised that climate change has environmental consequences, but it needs economic solutions. And it is a global problem that requires a global solution. And hence, trade and economic agreements, such as this one between Australia and Singapore, two great friends, is so important as an example for the world. Uh, one of the discussions that we had is that Singapore has enormous advantages. Uh, Singapore is one of the most innovative economies in the world. They've been uh, extraordinary at scientific breakthroughs, at commercialising, those opportunities as well. And they are known as an innovative companies. When I visited a country, uh, when I visited Singapore, I visited startups. It is one of the things that Singapore does really, really well. Uh, one of the issues that Singapore doesn't have though, a couple of assets they don't have, is space. We have in this island continent of ours, uh, a little bit bigger than the island continent of Singapore. <laughs> And hence a project like Sun Cable, uh, which has the potential to export clean energy to Singapore, is the ultimate win-win. If this uh, project can uh, be made to, to work, and I believe it can be, uh, you will see the world's largest solar farm. Uh, you will see the export of energy across uh, distances, but uh, the produ production of many jobs uh, here in Australia, including manufacturing jobs. And the prospect of uh, Sun Cable is just one part of uh, what I talk about when I say Australia can be a renewable energy superpower for the world. So the fact that this agreement is taking place as well, just prior to the East Asia Summit, prior to uh, the uh, ASEAN meeting, the G20 meeting, the APEC meeting, in our region, all taking place in November, is a really positive indication 
uh, to other countries in our region and indeed countries throughout the world who will look at this agreement and see that this is just a very positive initiative about making sure that we commercialise these opportunities, uh, that we maximise the spread of breakthroughs when they occur. And that is what uh, this agreement is aimed at with its 17 different components as well. Uh, next question is from Bloomberg. Question to both leaders. Given the recent decision by US President Joe Biden to curb supply of US chips to China, are you concerned about accelerating economic decoupling between the US and China? And just another question to Prime Minister Lee. In the past, you've been gently critical of the Australian government's approach to China. Do you think that's improved under the new government? Well, first of all, uh, decoupling is a worry. National security concerns are real. How wide or how narrowly they are defined, well, uh, it's the judgment of each government and administration. I think the Biden administration's latest move is a very serious one. I'm sure they have considered it carefully. It can have very wide ramifications. Uh, we will have to see how things work out. But we do worry that valid national security considerations may trigger off further consequences and may result in less economic cooperation, less interdependency, less trust, and possibly ultimately a less stable world. Um, your second question? Oh, my second question was... Was how are we going? <laughs> how are you going? <laughs> I, we, we never give ourselves support cards, much less our friends. Uh, I think we have our view of how uh, to maintain amicable relations with as many countries as possible while preserving our interests and standing up and protecting uh, ourselves from adverse developments overseas. And I'm sure Australia does that too and I am sure that in the process of diplomacy we share notes with one another and we often do so with the strictest and utmost confidence and confidentiality. Uh, we, we do indeed, but I, I will say what I've said uh, publicly, which is I want to lead a mature government that has mature relations with the world, that doesn't see international diplomacy as an opportunity for domestic political point scoring. And so what I've said publicly is that uh, we should cooperate with China where we can, uh, but stand up for Australia's national interest where we must. And I'll continue to take that view, uh, both privately and publicly. Uh, can I say, uh, when it comes to uh, other issues of cooperation and, and, and trade and various agreements that are around, part of the lesson of the pandemic is that we need uh, to, and all countries are looking at this, uh, we need national resilience. Uh, national security is not just about our defence systems. It's also about our capacity to make things here in Australia, uh, to be less vulnerable to shocks of whatever form, be it a future pandemic, uh, trade, cyber security shocks, or whether it be uh, international conflict. Uh, so we need to make sure uh, that we are more resilient that doesn't mean an isolationist policy, far from it, and today's agreement is an example of that as well, is where uh, with our friends, including our very close friends in Singapore, uh, we share such uh, common values uh, that uh, I've had a long association uh, with Singapore going back to uh, my first visit there in 1987 uh, as, a, uh, as a, a member of staff uh, for, for Tom Uren when I, I travelled there on a bilateral visit. Uh, ever since then I've been welcomed there uh, many times and Prime Minister Lee and I have met uh, here. I've had uh, lunch with the Foreign Minister in the Botanic Gardens there in, in Singapore. Uh, we share such close friendships and I think that today's visit has just strengthened that even more so uh, between my government and the government of Prime Minister Lee. Uh, Channel News Asia. Hi, Prime Ministers. Hi. 
I'd like to ask, um, how are Singapore and Australia seeking to maintain security and cooperation in supply chains amid in increasing geopolitical instability? And for Minister Albanese, how would Australia seek to deepen engagement in Southeast Asia? Well, we are working at it. As, as I said just now, countries are going for self resilience, but it's not possible for us to go for self-sufficiency. Um, we are too interdependent. Uh, you, you may produce a lot of minerals, you may have a lot of talent, but the world is a big place and you need to work with other countries and develop partnerships with other countries. And uh, you will do business with everybody, but with countries where you have a deep, established relationship of trust and confidence, you can do even more. And in the case of Singapore and Australia, we do have that reservoir of trust and confidence and that history, and we are working to deepen this and we have a working group working on supply chain resilience and uh, cooperation, and I hope they'll come up with some substantive proposals. I'll take the opportunity to thank the Prime Minister and Singapore uh, for the role that was played during the pandemic. It mightn't be known by all Australians, but essentially uh, without Singapore and its support, both by air and by sea, the vaccines that entered this country wouldn't have been possible. Along with PPE, along with ventilators, Singapore played such a critical role. Singapore is a reliable economic partner. Uh, it is a great trading nation. Uh, the port of Singapore I've visited and I've visited the airport on many, many occasions. And I think that economic relationship is so important between us in terms of securing those supply chains. Uh, secondly, when it comes to defence as well, uh, Singapore has such a, a, a critical uh, presence here in Australia. Uh, there are the Singaporean Defence Force being trained here uh, brings opportunities for them uh, because of the space that we have in central Queensland and the capacity that we have to assist our friends in Singapore. But there are also major benefits for Australia from that presence as well. There's major economic benefits in terms of jobs for the people of central Queensland, and that is why they are so welcome uh, there by the local community. But we've also seen from uh, Prime Minister Lee today, uh, who, who raised the issue uh, with me uh, off his own bat, as we say in Australia, of how can uh, our helicopters and our Defence Force infrastructure here help Australia during the floods, during your current crisis. That's what, that's what friends do. Uh, they see a friend going through a difficult time and they ask, how can we help? And Australia and Singapore are great friends. The friendship has been added to today. And I thank uh, very much Prime Minister Lee for his visit. And I wish him and his delegation who are here a safe journey home. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.